Hey everybody and welcome back to BK's Bullets. Today we're going to talk about Daredevil by Brian Michael Bendis. Hey everybody and welcome back to BK's Bullets. As always, I'm your host Brent Casina and today we're going to be reviewing the Daredevil by Brian Michael Bendis Ultimate Collection. I guess it's Bendis and Malieve Ultimate Collection. Uh, doesn't say that on the cover here, it just says it on the spine, Ultimate Collection. So I'm not quite sure exactly what the title is. In fact, it doesn't even say that inside either. It doesn't say like, The Ultimate Collection by Bendis. It just says, here's the writer, here's the artist, all that kind of stuff. But um, this collects issues 16 through 19 and 26 through 40. Now, I don't really think that the Bendis run on Daredevil really starts until you hit issue number 26 because that's when Alex Maleev jumps on. They do have the stuff in here that he wrote with David Mack that's kind of this like side story about a kid going through trauma therapy, remembering what Daredevil did to his dad. Um, and it's a very beautiful art style. If you've never read a David Mack book, this is kind of what he does. Lots of watercolors, lots of changes in style. Uh, in fact, even the very first page of like the first issue, maybe it was the cover, yeah. It's David Mack kind of aping Joe Quesada in a very, very good way. Um, if not, it is maybe it is Joe Quesada filling in here. Uh, certain stuff certainly fooled me, but I, I do know. I think I think David Mack is capable of aping Joe Quesada pretty well, at least his style at the time. Um, it doesn't say additional art and pencil, David Mack. Yeah, it doesn't say Joe Quesada anywhere here on the. Um, credits page. So I guess it, this is truly is David Mack aping Joe Quesada and doing a damn good job, unless there's something else I'm missing. But that's kind of a throwaway story. It's not really like part of the whole, per se. Um, it's not part of the narrative. It's not... Um, it never builds to anything. It's just kind of a side story. Now, after that, those issues, Bendis either took a break or maybe he wasn't really on the book until much later. You had Bob Gale come in um, I think with Phil Winslade do six issues about Daredevil putting like on trial and or not Daredevil on trial but Matt Murdock doing a trial he brings Daredevil on and interviews Daredevil as Matt Murdock it was a whole thing um, I only mention that to say it is referenced a little bit in Bendis's run when Foggy's talking to Matt Murdock and um, you know so if you're wondering what that's about that's the five issues previous to like uh, the beginning of issue number 26 so that's that. But this run is legendary, basically because it's mainly Bendis and Alex Maleev doing the art the entire time as like a team. Um, there is maybe a guest artist or two, especially in this volume, there's one or two at the end here. Um, but I know like the third volume that I'm currently in the middle of reading, it's all Alex Maleev. Um, there's no guest artist whatsoever. So it's a pretty impressive feat to see a team do a long run on a book. I mean, this, I think, accumulates maybe three years not this particular one but all three of them probably you know three three and a half years on the title which is a tremendous amount of comics compared to what people write now uh usually you don't have people staying on that long maybe it's six issues 12 issues or whatever unless you're like tom king doing 100 issues almost 100 issues on batman that kind of stuff um but bendis and believe are a phenomenal team um, so this is the stuff that really put them on the map. I d definitely think this is what put Alex Maleev on the map. Uh, he had done some Batman stuff with No Man's Land. I think he did No Man's Land number one when that event started. And that was, I think, prior to this. Uh, and then you have him jump on here and you see his art style kind of evolve as you read the book. Uh, at first he starts out very kind of like um, clear and not as gritty. Like a lot of his faces sometimes here with these gangsters are, you know, there's not a whole lot of shadow or anything. And then as you get more towards the back of the book, now you're kind of in this Bill uh effect with everybody with a lot of shadows, a lot of rendering, a lot of hatching. Like Matt's face on this panel is almost entirely in shadow. Um, and, and then all of his faces kind of go from, remember that cartoony one? And now they're all kind of like sketched, you know, um, or all the shadows are sketched in there. So it's very, very interesting. But this book is famous because it basically turned Matt's life upside down. Bendis made everybody in the world know 
in the Marvel Universe anyway, the fact that Matt Murdock was Daredevil. And the run is kind of Matt Murdock kind of dancing around that fact, trying to, to bob and sway and, and, and avoid the law, avoid getting arrested for this stuff, and find clever ways to, um, to get around the fact that everybody kind of knows he's Daredevil. So... Towards the end of the run, end of the run, things are coming to a head. But this particular volume is really, really strong. Once you get past that David Mack story, <coughs> this particular volume is really, really strong. Once you get past that particular David Mack story, because you have the run up basically to Matt's outing, uh, you have a new gangster come in and kind of try and take out Wilson Fisk. And in doing so, he, you know, gets caught by the FBI and then tells the FBI that, you know, every it's kind of a, a known secret amongst the crime world uh, in the Kingpin's organization that Matt Murdock is Daredevil. And this new gangster doesn't understand why this guy is still alive and why he's allowed to kind of run amok and mess up Kingpin's plans. So when he makes his move on Kingpin, he also makes his move on Matt Murdock kind of to show everybody his business. And the funny part is the way that Bendis kind of makes it all backfire on this one guy. It's like, you know, you got too big for your britches here, guys. And um, people respected the Kingpin and, and Matt Murdock way more than they ever respected you. And um, to see him crumble so quickly, it's kind of like, you know, it's a, a moth to a flame. He thought he was going to get the glory and then he got snuffed out really quickly. Um, but the so that's basically the first part of this book. And then the second part is Matt figuring out, you know, oh shit, my life's upended, people know I'm Daredevil, and the immediate fallout of that. Um, so it's a really interesting um, story here. You got people like Elektra showing up, you got Black Widow showing up, a conversation with Spider-Man. Um, and then towards the end of this book, you get this kind of interesting story, which I thought initially doesn't really matter. Uh, there's a couple of fill-in issues here without Alex Maleev about the White Tiger, gets caught in what seems like a robbery, what seems like a, a cop getting murdered, and he's framed for the murder. And Matt Murdock has to do this very public trial for uh, Hector Ayala, the White Tiger, at the time when everybody thinks he's Daredevil. And it's a very interesting story about how he, he, like the court system is, you know, the prosecutor's leveraging this against Matt Murdock, not necessarily against his client. Um, but it's a, it's a very good story, and it's got a little Terry Dodson fill-in at the very end, which doesn't match any of the uh, previous issues here, much less Alex Maleev. But the fact that it sits at the end of this collection, I think, makes it just, you know, it's, it's okay that it's there. You don't really have to worry about reading it. Um, but I will say that I say that to say that later on in Volume 3, you have a callback to this what you thought was a fill-in issue uh, or, or a fill-in arc. Um, it's calling back to that in a, in a big way. So I'm excited to see how that ends up. So there's lots of seeds planted here. There's lots of things going on. I got to commend it to Bendis and Maliev. This is a very engrossing read, especially once you get to issues number 26 and all the way through to number 40. Um, this is a book I could not put down, and that speaks to the strength of the art, the strength of the writing, and the fact that you know it just cements the legendary status that the Bendis Maliev Daredevil run has. So highly recommend this book if you can find it. I think it's out of print, but um, you know you can always pick it up on Comixology if you want to read them that way, or find it at your local comic book shop, or hunting online on eBay or um, Facebook groups. I picked up a lot of stuff. I think I actually picked up these trades from a Facebook group. I got them I think for like forty bucks, all three of them, uh, and they're in perfect condition. So you can look out on eBay and Facebook if you find the right the right people that are just looking to get rid of their stuff so they can make more room. So that's my review of Daredevil Ultimate Collection Volume 1, and we will see you guys next time in the Funny Pages.